Hi friends, it's Derek from TCI. Welcome back for another network build. This time I'm going to show you something that I haven't had the opportunity to show you before. We're going to be building a network in a single family home. Now because this is someone's home, I'm trying not to show too many identifying features. But if you'll walk up the driveway here with me, I'd like to introduce you to the work site. As we step into the garage here, you can see that this home is still early in construction. They've just finished framing and siding and now they're in the electrical rough-in phase. This is what I think is the best time to enter into this project and begin our work. Running Cat6 wires inside of a residence is quite difficult. Being able to see inside the studs and ceiling all at once without insulation and drywall in my way is extremely helpful. The homeowner has given us some drawings that indicate where they would like their Cat6 to go where they would like security cameras installed, and they've designated this closet here, or at least this future closet, as the location where all the Cat6 should be terminated. This closet is also where the electrical breaker boxes will be, so these are the electrical circuits here in yellow, and there will also be some security circuits in white that are stored in this closet. So let's talk a little bit about how we approach a job like this. Whenever we're doing a permitted job, the electrician will have put these blue boxes in place for us. If it's not permitted, you're on your own. You'll have to buy these and install them yourself, but generally they're already here when you get to a roughed in electrical job. These blue boxes are used for cable TV, telephone, and of course, Cat6. So that's where we're going to be installing the wires. In order to get through these studs, I'm going to copy what the electrician has done, which is with a spade bit or a paddle bit, you drill a half inch hole horizontally through the studs and you pull your wires through to the blue boxes. When I'm sharing the wall with an electrical system, I try to stay one to two inches away from these yellow or white Romex wires. There's an electrical hum on these that can theoretically interfere with the Cat6. All of the wires go back to the closet. And if I'm not sure how to get to the closet, I try to follow what the electrician did, drill my own holes next to his, and then pull my Cat6 through there. Everything eventually ends up inside that electrical closet. With the walls currently being open, it's pretty easy to work out a path for these cables. It's also easy to see potential obstacles and work around them. So what me and the boys do is get our boxes out, label our cables, and proceed to get set up with the sticks so that we can pass these from joist to joist. One of the things that you have to keep in mind whenever you're doing this is that other tradespeople will be working in the area. So the cables have to be tacked down pretty well and they need to be kept out of the way of future trades. So the drywaller, when they attach drywall to the ceiling, we've got to make sure the cables are clear. That's what these zip tie anchors are about. You can use any anchor you want. Sometimes I 3D print things. Sometimes I buy things at the store and sometimes I'm lazy and I just zip tie them in place. I don't crank the zip ties down super hard. I'm just trying to keep things out of the way of the drywaller. After all of the cables have made their way across the future attic space, we drill downwards and we rough in Cat6 into each of the blue boxes that were designated to take a data outlet. We also rough in wireless access points and any camera locations on the exterior of the building. Houses typically don't have very many Cat6 cables, so it doesn't take long to completely rough in the entire building and bring everything into the closet. In my opinion, whenever you're doing a single family residence, you want your cables to be very tight. So I go through and make sure that everything is tacked down nice and tight so it will stay exactly where it is while the other tradespeople are working. And that is it. We can't do any more at this phase of the project because the building needs drywall and insulation and a bunch of other things. So we're going to leave and then return to the job in a little bit. It's been a few months since our initial visit to roughen the cables and the house has progressed nicely. 
The whole space is almost completely finished. They just got done painting and there's only appliances and cabinetry left to be installed. So this is a great time for us to start terminating and faceplating all the wires. The first thing we do is look around and check to see if any of our wires got damaged by other trades while we were away. It's been probably something like three months that they've been sitting in this house and you just never know what's happened to them. Looks like the service loop on this particular camera broke away at some point in the past, fell all the way to the ground and gave this vine something to grab onto. These cables are not meant to be exterior, so we check to see if any of the jackets or conductors have been damaged by the rain, wind, or sun. And if that's the case, we'll trim it back to the area where it's still pristine. While we were away, the cable company also installed their coax cables inside the same blue boxes that we were using. So we've brought a few keystones to accommodate that. One of the other things that's come up is that the homeowner would like to have the in-wall Wi-Fi system from Unify installed. And we can't directly place that over the faceplate because that's going to obscure the coax connector. So in this particular instance, wherever we need an in-wall Unify access point, we're just gonna cut a whole new outlet right there, load up a low voltage mount, and then mount the in-wall system over that. If they later remove this at some future point, which I suspect they probably will, we'll just put a blank faceplate over this outlet that we've cut. In regards to how the in-wall Wi-Fi APs look aesthetically, I'm not sure if I love them or hate them just yet. The strength is okay. It took three of them to cover the majority of this small home. And I think if I had my own way and I waved my magic wand and it was my house, I'd probably go for the UFO shaped ones in the ceiling and just shut off the lights. However, the in-wall devices have pretty good performance and they come with extra ethernet ports on the bottom, which I think will be very handy in the entertainment center area. While the Wi-Fi is being worked out, we have another staff member going around the perimeter of the house and installing all of the cameras. We also install the doorbell. The cameras and the doorbell are all on the ring system. So everything needs to be adopted, tested, aimed, etc. And there's a lot of little critters out here in Hawaii that could make a nice home in the crevices of the camera. So we're gonna fill it with some silicone and some expanding foam just to make it a little harder for the bugs to set up shop. Now the last thing to work on after the perimeter, wall plates and cameras are installed is the closet itself. Kaysen's been in here toiling away, trying to make this into something usable. I'm curious what you guys would do if you were in my shoes, but here's how I handle these kinds of closets in somebody's house. Unlike a commercial space, I don't get in there and start putting in my own rack and my own shelves and patch panels and cable managers and all that stuff. Instead, I just do the minimum amount possible. The homeowner bought a router and a switch and that was it. So all I've done is terminate our wires as plainly as possible and then I've left it for him after the fact he can build anything he wants in this closet. The reason that I do that, instead of sort of enforcing my vision, is that this is somebody's house. And in a person's home, they're bound to have their own enthusiast interests or hobbies or family members that really want to take ownership of what's going on, technologically speaking, within the home. So I try to just stay out of it and give them a nice, even workspace where they can build anything that they want. Anytime I install my own stuff, half the time if I come back in a year to look at something, they've thrown away everything that I've put in and just bought a bunch of ubiquity equipment and rack and shelves and patch cords and the whole like. So you may as well let people pick what they want at the outset. If they happen to provide it to me, I'll happily install it. But in this case, the homeowner wasn't sure yet which route he was gonna go. I ended up coming back to this site one more time just to wrap things up. There were a couple of punch items. And now that the family has moved in, I couldn't really take video of their house, but I did take a bunch of photos and I'm panning through them here just so you can see 
what the exact final product ended up looking like. I hope that this video has been educational to you and gives you an idea how you might tackle something. I almost never work in a residence whenever I see that the stud framing is not available to me to pass wires through. If they've built their house and there's drywall everywhere and they'd like a bunch of wires added, I typically decline that kind of job. The kind of damage you end up doing to someone's house leaves subtle scars and they see it every single day and they're just never happy. I don't really want to get into that situation trying to keep a homeowner you know, happy with their house looking completely perfect. It's really challenging to do after they've built it. I've probably forgotten some important elements, forgot to talk about them, but I hope that you got something out of this. Really, it's just a matter of arrive, have a plan, keep everything run and safely tucked out of the way of the other trades, and then terminate it after those trades have finished. Do a little testing and you're all done. I appreciate you watching my videos and I'll see you again real soon in the next one.